kindergarten, first, and second grade. Kids are asked to do math that they cannot, they're not developmentally able to do. It's way over their heads. So at the youngest grades, they're doing things they can't possibly do. But every year older they get, they do less and less. So by the time they reach high school, they're doing way too little math. Milgram points out that in every high-achieving math country on Earth, all of them, by the time kids, uh, in all those high-achieving countries, you mentioned some of them, South Korea, Sweden, by the time kids get to seventh grade, they're already doing serious algebra. In some of those schools, they're already doing algebra in sixth grade. In, a, in No Child Left Behind America, American kids weren't really getting to algebra until at least eighth grade. And under Common Core, algebra is pushed largely into high school which means your kids will not get advanced math and calculus anymore. That's why Milgram said it won't prepare them. If you're not starting algebra to high school, there's no way you get to calculus your senior year. And that's what Zimba was forced to concede. It's not going to prepare them for that. By why would we put together, if we keep talking about how wonderful Common Core math is, why do we put together a curriculum that doesn't even let them have calculus anymore? How is that progressive? Well, the purpose, as Milgram suggests, the purpose of Common Core math is not to get kids to do math. It's to communalize math. Right. Take this video. This young lady is a community organizer in the city of Chicago. You cannot make that up. <laughs> and she's talking to a group of high school Illinois uh, math teachers about the philosophy of Common Core math. Here's what she says. But even though the new Common Core, even if they said three times four was elective, if they were able to explain their reasoning, and explain how they came up with their answer really in uh, words and moral explanations and they showed it in the picture that they just got the final model wrong. We're really more focusing on the how and the way we... And, that's, and to be fair to her, she says that she, uh, a little bit later in the talk, a concerned teacher raises her hand and says, but please tell me the right answers matter. And she says, well, they do, but... But the process matters more. This is communal math. One of the ways Common Core math is being taught, certainly in places like New York, at the elementary level, is the so-called parent share program, where teachers don't teach math to kids. Matter of fact, do you know that coming from Arnie Duncan at the Department of Education, there already, there's already a big movement coming from the federal government to stop calling teachers teachers under Common Core? They want them renamed facilitators. Because a facilitator is somebody who gives kids somebody and something somebody else. A teacher actually has the responsibility of learning. If you're a facilitator, you just take something that's handed to you and you hand it to them. That's the movement. One of the ways that this is, the primary way that, that math is being taught at the Common Core level in elementary school is the parent share program, where teachers come in, put kids in groups of two and three. They hand them math problems. The purpose of the assignment is for each group to agree on what they think the right answer is, not the right answer. We actually have an exam from the state of New York. Little third grade boy, six times seven, he writes 42 as the answer. Gets it marked wrong, and in red pencil, the teacher writes, the other two children in your peer group agreed on a different answer. And because they agreed, they got it right. You got it on your own, so this little boy got marked wrong, even though he had the correct. That's exactly what she said, right? And so you see what it is. Math is hard. Most American kids are never going to progress very far in math. I didn't, right? I, I talked to you, Milgram, about my story. In third grade, I could read it almost to college level. Don't know why, I just had the ability. And in third grade, they let me read big people books. I was reading Shakespeare. It's why I entered the high finance world of English professor. Because I'm a little bit of a But in third grade, my math skills were decidedly second grade. And you know what? They still are. I can balance a checkbook, I can leave a tip, and that's the end of it. But so what? The world needs more than CPAs. But think about what we said about gifted programs going away. See, to this, as Milgram points out, to, this, to these people, it's unfair. It's unfair that I could be at that level, and it was unfair of them to let me. I had no right moving ahead of the class. And in the same way, kids who can do math do higher math. It's not fair. We don't want a system anymore that rewards, in particular areas, those kids who can get ahead. We want a system where everybody's the same. And do you understand how that's all you can have if it's a standards-based system? And where do the standards have to be if you're going to get most kids? This is social justice math. This is exactly what people like Howard Zinn called for in their history textbooks. <clears throat> Taking away privilege. Who, who are you to be able to do math that well at that age? We're going to have to stop it. And so we lead to the next video. This is a fascinating one. A little girl. Mom puts her up to the whiteboard. This, this woman was a lot of, the mom has a lot of math in her background. She can't help 
her third grade child with her math homework. So mom puts the little girl at the whiteboard, has her work a problem. Watch this. Great. So what I want you to do is, can you solve that problem showing me the way that you learned how to solve it in school? Okay. And talk to me while you're solving it. So we learned that a big square like this is a hundred. So we could make that hundred into a cube, which would make a thousand. So I'm going to do that. Oh, no. So let's just say that's a thousand. Mm -hmm. Wow. And now we ha we still have to do five hundred. Could make that into five sheets. And we have sixty, which are just nine to ten. Then For her birthday, she got a thousand twenty-three. The dots represent one. Okay. So now we have to add all of these together. So you could make a thousand. All of these together is four hundred. Now you need 600 more. So now I'm going to write the numbers down. So we have 1,000 plus, well let's just say 3,000 because we have three cubes. 3,000 plus 100, 200, So now we can erase all these sheets and hundreds and tens and stables. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. can just add, and that gives us a total of 3,763. Okay. Yeah. Now that problem you just solved took about eight minutes. That's what we're doing in school. But at home I'm taught how to stack. And we're not allowed to do stacking in school. That's why we have to figure it out that way. Okay. So I'm going to stack these numbers, which is way easy. No. What are you thinking? You're looking at your problems. You got two different answers. Uh, moms and dads were freaking out because their kids couldn't add in fourth grade, started hiring tutors, having kids work ahead. The school freaked out and threatened and warned the moms and dads. Here's the warning. The links on this page are intended to support the classroom instruction that your child receives from this teacher. It is not appropriate to go ahead of the classroom instruction or to use this site to have your child work on math that is intended for other grade levels. That's the warning. Now here's the threat. <clears throat> your child's math instruction and math placement will not change as a result of working ahead. This means that your child will continue to work in the, excuse me, in the grade level appropriate math regardless of any work that is done and turned into the teacher. Do you see what they just said? I don't care how much math your kid can do. If he's a third grader, he stays doing third grade math. Your kid might be ready for algebra or geometry in third grade, but it doesn't matter if he or she can do it. They're going to stay and draw cubes and lines and squares. Quit trying to move your kid ahead. Quit trying to allow your kid to move forward. Keep him where he is. Do you see what this is? That is staggering, and there are dozens of schools that are doing this. Because it, all that matters is that student standard. And the purpose of the standard is not to raise American kids, but to make all American kids the same. 
It is an ab the absolute opposite of individuality. This is communal man. This is communistic. Think about outcome-based education by definition. That's what we've been doing, outcome-based education. We don't worry about the kids we have in front of us, what we, how we can help them. All we worry about is that when we're done with those kids, they're all in exactly the same place. Kids who can do math and kids who can't, they're all in the same place. And again, I want to remind you of that. It's a lot easier to make everybody not do math than it is to be able to enable everybody to do higher math. And so how is that not socialism? It doesn't matter what your kid's attitude is. It doesn't matter what your kid's talents or abilities are. It doesn't care matter what your kid's effort is. It doesn't matter what kind of quality teachers you have or books you have. All that matters is that everybody ends up in the same place. Isn't that by definition socialism? Isn't that what this, you got American schools threatening kids to not get ahead anymore? That's common core. You see what I mean when I tell you? It doesn't matter what ridiculous pedagogy they pick. And Milgram's right. If what they wanted was to help kids who learn math differently, then you'd start by teaching them the intuitive way, the simple way. It took 30 seconds to do that stacking math problem. It took, and do you understand that? Eight minutes. You're going to come, you come to math class. You assign kids groups and give them problems. Then you give them 15 or 20 minutes to work out the answers. Do you understand why algebra has to wait till high school? How long does it take every class period to do five problems? How, and look, for somebody who is lousy at math like me, if you put me in a group of two other kids, I'm going to pretend like what they, they seven times six, if I was a little kid who sounded like he knew what he was talking about, he said 42 million, I just said whatever he said. And if you allowed me in math class to spend half the period drawing things, I love that. But I would have pulled down the rest of the class. I wouldn't have been helped. What is the purpose? This is the Howard said, this is social justice, right? Everyone will be the same. There will be no standouts, there will be no getting ahead. And if that means retarding and slowing down and pulling back those kids who can, then in the name of fairness, we have to do it. 